They're the, some of the early migrators. These guys are freeze tolerant and overwinter in the leaf litter. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days and sponsored by Hotel Vermont and New England Federal Credit Union. My name's Ava Saulberger. We are here in Huntington, and tonight we are out for a spring amphibian migration adventure. What's really great about amphibians this time of year is that it's one of these forms of wildlife that you can really go and experience firsthand and it's just magical. So this guy was crossing the road, Whoa, wow. trying to get to the pond. It's great to go and help them across the road if it's safe. There's these really concentrated days, those first really warm evenings when it's raining. It's amazing to see just hundreds of animals moving across the road in some sites. You just, you almost can't keep up with them. Every year, amphibians and reptiles come down from the hills into the marshes, the wetlands and the ponds to breed. It is amphibian crossing season and it's very evident here at my house. So we like to fall asleep to the peepers. And that's who we're listening to right now. That's who we're listening to. So there's hundreds of these little guys. So tonight we're looking purely for those amphibians that are out looking for their mates tonight, trying to continue their species on to the next generation. And it's just really fascinating to see these kind of like invisible migrations that most people don't notice of these really vibrant animals that have such a complex life cycle. So we have students, some echo educators, herp enthusiasts. <laughs> what is a herp enthusiast? Someone who is excited about amphibians, also reptiles. We're yes. going herping, I like right, that. Right, we're going herping. Okay, all right. As amphibians, they need to keep their eggs in the water, lay their eggs in the water. So this is a frog egg mass. So tonight we're going to go out and do what's called a nighttime road search. So in this time of year, in the spring, when it's wet out like it is tonight, hopefully not pouring on us, the amphibians are starting to move to their breeding grounds, which are vernal pools, other bodies of water. And so we're in this perfect location. It's this intersection of the woodlands where they overwinter and the wetlands. It's always fun to get out and see who's, who's crawling around and who's breeding, who's calling, more of the late breeders you'll see later on. We'll start to see some reptiles. I like to make sure I have a reflective vest and a really good headlamp. And I also usually bring a flashlight. I bring my phone for documenting the species. Obviously good waterproof boots and rain gear. Oh, there's another wood frog. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying I'm a male, don't mate with me. And uh, so that's kind of a release call. They're both males. Coming out here and hearing the amphibians and seeing them up close, and it gives you a much bigger appreciation for them. I really like discovering new things. So like finding creatures where I don't expect to find them and often in like bigger numbers than I would ever think there could be. You see other flashlights slowly moving towards you. <laughs> I ran into Nina actually near the famous Moncton Wildlife Crossing. Yeah, and I've actually met more of my neighbors being out quite a bit. We just got home and we saw all these like crazy lights. <laughs> we were like, almost, like they're walking it's salamanders. <laughs> so this is a spotted salamander. This is one of three mole type salamanders that we have. So much larger than the ones people usually see out in the woods when they're hiking because they live in burrows most of the years. People don't really see them. So you think he's out looking for a mate right now? Right, he's or he might have found one and is heading back. And here's a spermatophore. Yeah. This is what these guys then try to get the females to pick that up. That's how they mate. Mm -hmm. That is spotted salamander sperm. Yeah. Well, from like a really young age, I always was down by ponds looking at frog eggs and like raising tadpoles and stuff. They're just very fascinating, and the more that you learn about them, the more you realize how interesting they are. And they're a really important part of our food chain. You know, they're in the food web. I feel like they're a really important creature to study. While I've been teaching about butterflies at Echo, this is something that I'm really passionate about, so I've been really excited to come out tonight. Oh, God, they're so cute. This is an eastern newt, and this is an adult. They spend their adult life in the water. They lay their eggs in the water. Their little salamander larvae grow up in the water. And then they hatch out, and they turn into what's called the red eft, which most of you have probably seen walking around on land. They're the bright orange salamanders. And they walk around on land for anywhere from three to seven years. And then they return to the water, and they change back into this dark green adult. Oh, that's a frog. 
freshwater leech. Uh, oh. Oh. So it's like the a green frog, frog has these ridges, these dorsolateral ridges. Spring creepers are actually a tree frog species. And if you look really closely at their toe pads, you can see they're kind of widened. They're good climbers. That's the aggression call for the male, so it sounds kind of like a metallic comb. Hey, darling, go find your one true love. <laughs> So we just helped him cross the road. He was over on the other side. So he was heading this way. So we're going to put him down on the other side so no one runs over him. Roads are not a good thing for most amphibians and reptiles in general. In some spots, you can have thousands of animals trying to cross each night. And if that's a heavy traffic area, that population is going to be wiped out pretty quickly. Being a herper is kind of like the agony and the ecstasy. I'll come out in my road and there's... Yeah. Dozens and dozens and dozens yeah. of hit ones. And it's always really sad when you want to move one and a car comes by and you're like doing the... <laughs> we talked to the kids about what they would do if they saw a salamander or a frog that was in the road and how to shepherd them across safely. Once you tell them that the salamanders are on the move and that they're being hit by cars, they want to save all the salamanders. So, I mean, ideally, if you know that there's a crossing site on a rainy night like this, you'd slow down and you know keep your eyes out for frogs and salamanders try to go around them or you know even better take an alternate route just so over here we have a whole bunch of wood frog eggs there are different stages if you look at some of these they're clearly older and the ones that are kind of more bluish looking are very fresh so those are probably from sometime this evening they lay and they scat they lay yep. and they go. You lay a lot of eggs and you hope some make it to adulthood, but you expect a lot won't. So amphibians are an indicator species that can tell you a lot about what's happening in the environment. So tonight we can hear all of these beautiful peepers and wood frogs. If one season they were to go silent, it would be a huge sign that something is strong in their environment. One of the main concerns for these guys is habitat loss or fragmentation. And one of the issues obviously is roads that we've talked about, but for things like spotted salamanders, they breed in these little tiny pools. And if somebody goes and decides they want to build a house there, build a road, build a development, whatever it is, cut into these woods up here, we're going to take out a lot of overwintering habitat for these animals. It's magical and we want to preserve them so we need to know more about them and where they are. We report to the Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas. We're interested in reports of you know where these major crossing sites are. 30 years ago, we knew almost nothing about the kind of amphibians that we had here in Vermont, and so we're still figuring it out. So this here is a spotted salamander, and you should be on the lookout for little creepy crawlies like this while you're stuck in Vermont. And we will get stuck in Vermont with you in this here salamander again real soon. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and sign up for our weekly email alerts. Don't worry, you're gonna be all right. I know you're nervous, but don't worry, I got you. And I also made team salamander cookies for me. Salamander cookies. <laughs> and there are less blue ones because the blue spotted salamanders are more rare. That's what happens when a scientist thinks. <laughs> her humor right here. <laughs> I wonder if she's found her true love yet. I didn't see anyone in the puddle with her, so. <laughs> Hard to say. <laughs>